2015, we uh, started our company uh, with the vision of bringing practical AI to continuous manufacturing vertical. Uh, there's a lot of companies out there that, uh, that they, they, are, they, are, they are active in this space. And it's important for me to first explain what we are not before what, what I uh, explain what we are. We are not a predictive maintenance company. So with that aside, we wanted to uh, build a platform that is turnkey, autonomous, and can deliver value to the continuous manufacturing clients by optimizing the quality of the product while the product's been made. And uh, this, is, this has been a big challenge in the industry due to the fact that continuous manufacturing generates a lot of data, a lot of variability while this data is created because the price process is highly dynamic. So uh, our platform have been able to deliver value to our customers utilizing this data in real time and morphing its uh, modeling concept to the dynamic nature of the process. So the focus for us is uh, optimizing the product quality while optimizing the raw material. To give you an example, in a paper making settings, while the paper has been made on the machine, the quality of a paper can vary for, uh, with uh, due to a variety of different uh, factors. Uh, on a typical machine, there are two to 3,000 different tags and variables that uh, can impact, subset of them can impact the quality of a product. So our system can uh, not only monitor, but also analyze a subset of this data that has a direct impact on the quality of a product. And while the product is ma being made, maintain the, the, and optimize the quality of that product. At the same time, we are able to optimize the raw material, including chem chemical, fiber, or, or uh, depend on an industry. For example, in the plastic industry, we are optimizing rosin. In, uh, uh, in the industrial water, we are optimizing polymer. Uh, while this, the, the, the product being made. Uh, the downtime reduction, one of the main interests in the industry, obviously, is, uh, is, is uh, being able to reduce the downtime, increase the yield, and, and uh, detect anomalies why these products are being, uh, being made and processes running. And sustainability improvement is obviously a big key factor in all these manufacturers. They want to reduce uh, the consumption of chemical, raw materials and uh, energy, water, and variety of different, uh, different uh, inputs to the machine. We are currently active, highly active in pulp and paper industry, uh, in plastic industry, and we are now entering also industrial water and municipality water industry. So the top four challenges that manufacturers around the globe are, uh, are dealing with, and especially after pandemic, we saw that a lot of these uh, issues became more evident and companies are paying a lot more attention to and looking for the solutions uh, are prime, uh, predominantly are these four, raw material cost, uh, in, the, in, the, uh, the, the interruption in the supply chain during the pandemic era. It actually was a big rude awakening to many, many industries about how the raw material cost can vary and how it can impact the production cost of these manufacturing environments. So uh, by optimizing the consumption of these raw materials, we are able to reduce the cost of production that uh, we have some use cases that we're going to be sharing with you. Productivity gain, obviously, by creating a better quality product, keeping the, uh, the product uh, on, uh, near the target uh, is very important. So reducing scrap, increasing yield is uh, one of the target areas for us. Skilled labor gap. So one of the uh, big problems in manufacturing that uh, is not only in, in North America, but now we see it globally, is the, uh, the uh, shortage of skilled labor. Uh, by some estimate, by 2030, we're going to have over a million uh, 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 you know, sh uh, people short for our manufacturing sec sector that, they, that uh, the manufacturing environment is going to suffer about the, uh, not having these skilled labor coming in. Baby boomers retiring, 
the younger folks are not going to work in these manufacturing environments and there's a big gap of a knowledge going out of the door and, and the knowledge needed to run these machines. And what we have uh, experienced is that AI is the only solution right now to be able to capture those experiences and create a practical in a, a system and a platform for the manufacturers to use the, the knowledge that these folks had and, uh, and, and essentially be able to not only run these machines, but run them better. I think Mike earlier said people matter. And, and one of the principles of what we do in our platform are people, domain expertise. And of course, sustainability goal, as I mentioned, is, is ESGs are very, very important to the companies. Before it was a lot of government demands, a lot of organization, now consumers demand that. And a lot of companies now uh, are paying a lot of attention to that. And part of our, uh, our uh, value propositions to our customers is to uh, help them with, with optimizing their energy, water consumption, as I mentioned, uh, some of the raw materials. So uh, in general, what we have um, offered the industry is to change and, and transform the uh, sort of a reactive control of their process to a proactive control of the process. Traditionally, when something happened in a manufacturing environment, an operator looked at it, went and looked for a root cause. They had a lot of experience. They knew what happened. And then they tried to prevent it for the next time to happen. And this was a cycle. It happened all the time. What we have built here is to detect the anomalies and issues while the, while the product and the process is running and prevent it from happening. So it is, essential, it is very critical to do this on an autonomous basis. As, as, as I highlighted in the, in the beginning, the autonomous nature of our platform actually is a big interest to our clients. So in a, a sort of a typical manufacturing environment, you have a lot of DCS controllers, OPCs or controllers that control these different assets. The data gets collected to the different data historians, operators control these machines, and uh, that's how the traditional operations runs. They have automation, they have traditional automation systems. They are mostly center lining uh, and, and monitoring uh, systems and uh, some, some automations also, some advanced automations built to it. So how we are doing this is we are collecting the data coming from this process, from data historian, sending it to our platform, analyze the data in real-time basis, predict the quality of a product while it's being made on the machine, and then act on it. In a, um, I can give you another example on a paper industry. When a roll of paper, when the fiber hits the machine from the beginning of the process, it takes 45 minutes from the fiber and water to become a big roll of paper. In this 45 minutes, at the end of the line, an operator goes, takes a piece of that paper, takes it to the lab, tests it, and then reports that this is a good quality product. Now, there's a lot of flaws in this. If this is one giant roll of paper, someone took six inches of that pa paper and tested it, of course, it's not the representative of the whole product set. The other problem is if that product fails in terms of quality, the product that's been run on the machine is considered fail. So there's a lot of waste happening. Now, what we have done, we are predicting the quality of a paper made on the machine every 30 seconds while it's made versus every 45 minutes an operator testing it. Now, we take that prediction and then look at the different variables around the machine and see where, what's the root cause of that problem and make recommendations. Not only make the recommendations, we send that recommendation back to the control system and close loop it and control the asset. Give you an example. If the system under, uh, uh, detects that the product quality is deviating due to a chemistry, a chemical that is injected to the machine, the system sends the information back a set points and, precision, and does the precision optimization on that asset on the machine. And we have multiple instances of this right now running. We do this in a plastic, the same principle. 
but different type of closed loop. Uh, we are IoT uh, device agnostic, so we can control it. We can, all right, <laughs> gotcha, uh, sure. So uh, we, can, we can control with any sort of IoT device and control different assets. We can go through the data historian or any other means. Our platform has its own dashboard with variety of different functionalities. Obviously, the big part of this is autonomous control. The reason it's important for that autonomous control is that we have learned that operators have a lot of competing priorities. If you hand them recommendations to go apply to the machines, it's not gonna happen. So to, to mitigate that, that problem, we have built the closed loop concept that not only applies these settings to the machine, controls part of the machine, learns from its results, and then optimizes itself automatically. It, it gives a, a lot of advantage to the operators that typically in a, in a continuous manufacturing, go in, set up a setting on, on different knobs and livers on the machine based on the product they are making and leave it. So they're always overfeeding uh, the, chemist, the chemical, water, and a variety of different inputs to the machine. And now we are bringing the precision optimization using an AI on, on all these different aspects of the, of the process. We are also entirely API-based. So if a customer wants to integrate with their own system, we can entirely integrate with their own system. They can do their own visualization. They can even tie to their own control system if they want to, but they can use the platform. Our customers, they don't need to have their own uh, data science team, data engineers, or anything like that. The fact that uh, they're already struggling with not having enough people to running their processes, we don't want to add the burden to them to create their own data science team or engineers. We see a lot of tool sets out there, a lot of companies providing a lot of AI machine learning tool sets, ask companies to go ahead and build their own solutions. And we have taken that away from the manufacturing industry. We think that is essential that we have to be highly value driven. We have to have, be highly turnkey for this customer to adopt a system like this. And they have to see the value as quickly as possible. Because at the end of the day, all these solutions today that we are talking about has to impact their PL, has to show a dollar sign at one point. For, for these companies to really be attractive to adopt them and get them. Otherwise, a lot of companies are gonna get into science project and, 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 and not seeing any, any commercial value out of that. Uh, so I handed to my, my partner, Comran, uh, to walk you through the, some, of the, some of the benefits of the system and also some of the use cases. Thank you, Karim. <clears throat> Basically, as, as Kerry mentioned, this autonomous optimization <clears throat> algorithm that we have and platform that we have, trying to help uh, basically our clients to uh, get benefits in, in several aspects. Uh, one of them is uh, in the raw material consumptions. And I'm going to uh, basically explain a couple of use cases uh, with that regard, uh, uh, which is the reduction in chemistry consumption. So basically, annually, we can see that uh, up to 25%, we can get saved on uh, chemistry consumption in pulp and paper clients that we had. At the same time, we can reduce the variability of the process. And you know that variability is always related to quality uh, <clears throat> by 28%. So uh, we can improve the quality at the same time and also save some money uh, uh, for uh, the production, so, some cost, the production cost. 98% uh, uh, basically quality adherence uh, gained if when our clients use our platform. In terms of uh, sort of like a sustainability aspects of that, we have also some uh, benefits. Our platform provides some benefits uh, to our clients as well. For example, uh, as many as uh, 30 less uh, tank trucks, uh, chemistry trucks are, are being transferred. That basically helps. Uh, 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 it can be translated to less fuel consumption. Um, and in terms of the raw material, we have up to 2% reduction in wood fiber consumptions, which means that uh, we are uh, using less lumber and as, as preserving more forest. And finally, in terms of CO2 uh, reduction, 
uh, we have uh, up on up to uh, approximately up to 50 tons of uh, reduction in carbon emissions. And uh, basically, these are the numbers, approximate numbers that we have based on uh, the calculations. Uh, uh, we have a value capture actually uh, a module in our platform that can capture those benefits. And when we accumulate them, these numbers are annually, uh, basically the, the annual outcome or benefits that our clients get. All right. So now let me be a little bit more specific and try to pr present a, a, a couple of use cases in different verticals. One is in pulp and paper, and the other one would be in plastic. So specifically in pulp and paper, we are talking about packaging and liner board uh, production process. And uh, one of the important quality measures in this process is called uh, wet tensile strength. Basically, what does it mean? It means that uh, if the liner board is wet, how strong is that? So basically, how strong is, is your box when it, it gets wet? Uh, why it is important, uh, let me give you an example. When you go, go and, and, uh, to grocery store and get a, a, a beverage, a six pack, and as soon as you step out, especially if you live in, in South in, in Atlanta, due to moisture, you see that uh, there is uh, um, basically because of the moisture, that box gets wet and you want to make sure the, uh, uh, the integrity of the box, it's not torn off and, and you don't lose your, your beer. So that is related to wet tensile strength, actually. So that's one quality, important quality measure when they are producing uh, the boxes and, and liner boards. Uh, in order to make sure that uh, quality, one of the things that they use is a chemistry called wet strength. So, and, and that helps to increase wet tensile. And usually operator, because we want to make sure that the uh, uh, the paper they are producing, the roll that they are producing is not wasted and they, they want to avoid uh, any uh, scrap. What they do, uh, they usually over consume the weather strength. So basically they use the, the uh, uh, overuse that weather strength in the production process. We realized that issue and we said, okay, how about this? How about we use our basically autonomous optimization uh, and AI uh, a predictive model to help them reduce the amount of weather strength. But at the same time, we wanna make sure we not only sacrifice quality, but improve quality and reduce variation. That was the problem that we wanted to, to solve and, and using our platform, uh, uh, we were able to uh, provide some uh, um, recommendations and those recommendations are uh, closed loop back to the system and automatically in, in, uh, applied in the system. And we, we were able to reduce uh, 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 the chemical consumption by 15% and improve the quality adherence, target adherence by 38% and reduce the uh, variation in lab uh, with tensile strength by 28%. Uh, let me explain the figures that we have here. We have two charts. Uh, uh, the, the left panel is the distribution of weather strength. Okay, so basically the, mat the raw material or chemistry that they are using to make sure the quality is good. So you have two different uh, color for two representing two different distributions. The green one is uh, after they use our platform and the yellow one is the when operators in charge and not autonomous optimization being used. So if you see, if you compare them, we can see uh, the in terms of the variability of the dis uh, distribution when they are using the autonomous optimization, uh, we not only improve the mean or reduce the uh, consumption of chemistry by 15%, but also we are decreasing the uh, variability. On the right side, the right panel, you will see the quality measure, the wet tensile strength, how strong is that paper? So because you reduce the, uh, uh, we reduce the chemistry by 15%, we wanna make sure we are not sacrificing quality. So again, uh, the distribution of quality when autonomous optimization is used is green and the distribution of quality when operator was in charge uh, 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 was uh, is basically in, in yellow. And as you can see, uh, um, and, and the dashed lines are basically the target region. And as you can see, um, 
we not only reduce the variability, but we can improve the target adherence by 38%. Uh, a simple example, and, and, and that basically in total, like if you add, add up these numbers, it can basically save customers more than uh, 500K uh, annually per line. So uh, like if, if they use it in different lines, that, that number uh, uh, magnified actually. Uh, can you please go to the next one? Okay. The next example or use case is also the same, uh, a similar basically uh, case study, but uh, in a different mean. And uh, again, we want to optimize whether strength, we make sure we want to make sure that the tensile is not uh, uh, basically uh, sacrificed and improved also at the same time. And a similar results, we just want to make the, show you that it's not just for uh, one, one uh, meal. We can apply this solution in different and we can get the similar results. In this one, we get we got 25% reduction in uh, chemistry usage, and we got 63% uh, improvement in target adherence and 23% reduction in bed tensile strength. Uh, strength. And that basically is translated to around 425K annually uh, savings for annual savings for uh, the client. All right. Uh, the next use case, which is the last one, uh, is in a different vertical. It's in plastic, actually, uh, plastic extrusion. Uh, and in this uh, basically uh, use case, in this plant, they were trying to. Uh, reduce the uh, scrap rates on the products that they were producing. It's medical vials that use for uh, collecting samples, collecting blood, and uh, storing them. Uh, it's very critical uh, a product. And if there is any uh, sort of like a, a anomaly or or defect, uh, that should be scrapped. So they had the very high scrap rate. And uh, what they wanted us to do to help them with. Uh, um, autonomous optimization. So basically how we can adjust um, the uh, machine settings and the process parameters uh, such that the scrap rate is, is reduced. And we want they wanted to do this auto automatically and in uh, close to real time. Another uh, uh, issue that they had was they wanted to find what are the most influential variables. If there is any problem, can we identify that? So kind of like a root cause identification uh, um, for, for them as well for the process. So what we did, we tried to, as, as Kerry mentioned, one important element of our AI-based uh, platform is uh, that we do not only rely on data. So what we do is the combination of data and, and, and domain knowledge. And what we did, we uh, basically uh, developed an uh, an uh, uh, autonomous optimization platform, which combined SME knowledge with the AI and data-driven models and, and, and uh, uh, resulted in an autonomous optimization that can be used in real time for reducing uh, defects and a scrap. The result was 35% uh, reduction in a scrap bottles in seven months we, and, and 230 uh, uh, thousand bottles were saved, which translated to uh, savings equivalent to six hundred thousand dollars annually. So, if you look at these two charts, you see we implemented that solution on two machines. Machine one, uh, before using our platform, the scrap rate uh, was 0 0.19, and after that, 0 0.13. And a similar story we had uh, in the second machine. And as I said, on top of that, we provided them with a module of uh, uh, monitoring and root cause identification. So every time that they have um, a sudden a, a spike in their scrap rate, uh, we identify what are the important root causes and, and what has changed. And, and that would that had helped them to um, in, in, uh, uh, do the corrective actions in a timely manner. Now I turn it over to Karim again for uh, conclusion. Thank you, Kamran. So uh, uh, in a nutshell, uh, what we have is our, our platform is providing two primary uh, areas of, of uh, improvement and, and, and value to our customers, operational and sustainability. As I mentioned, increasing yield, optimizing product quality, throughput, 
and also mitigating the skilled labor shortage is, is, is a big factor and a big value to our customers. But at the same time, you're also saving raw materials, saving chemicals, reducing emissions, saving energy and water for our customers as well. And uh, we have multiple cases in different verticals to show. Uh, and uh, so uh, if you're in the continuous manufacturing, if you are struggling with uh, uh, the quality variability, I think Kamran mentioned variability reduction has always been a challenge. And this is what we do best. And while we are doing that, we are able to also optimize and reduce the input of the raw materials, uh, including water, energy, and others in, into, into your process. So we would love to speak with you. We are here uh, this afternoon, and uh, thank you for listening. Our question. Um, good morning. Good morning. The um, your solution seems like it's broader and more customized than, say, just um, you know an optical type solution. And um, it, it seems like your one of your core competencies would be that customer interface, figuring out what parameters would lead to some type of intelligence around reducing the chemical usage or reducing the energy usage, reducing the, the scrap, for example. Sounds like that's true. I, I see you nodding. That is correct. Could, that is could, correct. could you describe, so my question is, could you describe what that interface looks like? What? How do you apply that core competency to a particular customer's um, application? Sure, that's a great question. So uh, um, camera systems, right? Uh, I can give you a case of where we use precision camera systems or variety of different sensors. Typically in a manufacturing setting, there's already a lot of different sensors, including vision systems, robotics controls, uh, quality systems are in place. We use those as a data input to our platform. So what we typically do, depend on objective, if the customer wants to optimize their quality and also optimize a certain areas of input, let's say particular chemistry that is very costly to them and it needs to be optimized on a precision basis, we get six to 12 months of data from their process, bring it in, domain expertise, as we said, people matter, it's very important to incorporate those domain expertise along with the data, training the, that data that you're getting. Our data, our data science team uh, built an initial model, runs that model through before we even engage with the customer to the next phase and tell them how much we can help them, how precise can we can be, how, how much of the, uh, uh, the, the predictions that we are doing really is going to help them. Because one of the things that we want to do is we see a lot of customers has been burned by getting involved in very expensive science projects. And we are bringing applied science to them, right? It should, as, as I mentioned earlier, it should, uh, it should translate to a dollar amount at the end of the day. Now, our system takes the information from a variety of different sensors, including vision systems, as part of its model and runs them through on a continuous basis and provides recommendations on where it matters. And let's say, uh, let's say we have 200 different variables in the system, 10 top variables that typically operators always adjusted to uh, be able to optimize the quality. Our system uses that knowledge along with the machine learning and AI knowledge to provide the best uh, recommendation for their action. And then not only provides that in a dashboard or in a notification to the operators, but also has a capability to close loop it. So sends the data to a particular asset on the process. If an operator before optimized the pump every 30 minutes or went and changed it based on what happened in the process, the uh, the, our platform can do that every, can predict it every 30 seconds and then applies that change to that particular pump, for example, depend on a process every five to 10 minutes because you don't want to introduce chaos to the system either, right? So that's the big difference. I hope I answered your question. Yes. One from the remote audience and some parallels here for a couple of questions I sure. have from different people remotely. In the beginning of the presentation, you noted that carbon reduction is one of the opportunities with your platform. I did not 
I did not see it specifically in your use cases, but are you capturing on-site energy savings for carbon reduction, or are you only calculating reduced transportation emissions? Uh, so uh, in terms of a uh, uh, pulp and paper, uh, I can give you an example on a carbon reduction. Of course, the transportation of the, of the chemical on the trucks, the making of the chemical itself that we're reducing, right? It, ha it, spends, uh, it consumes a lot of energy. But in the case of paper, we have been able to help our customers create paper with less fiber, meaning a thinner paper on the machine, and then using less steam and energy to dry it out. And that directly translates to, con to, to reduce the consumption of the energy in their plants. Now we are right now actually in the middle of, uh, one of the things we provide to our customer on a weekly basis is a value capture report. We tell our customers which areas exactly how much we are saving them in terms of the tonnage on a, on a liquid chemistry, the tonnage on dry chemistry, as well as how much fiber. Now energy and ESG becoming a big factor that everyone wants to follow. In this particular case, reduction of steam is, is something that our customers are very, very interested to, to translate to the carbon emission reduction.